So we will now look at the problem of maximum sub -array. Um Imagine that you are to investigate in some company and Tesla, for example, and you are allowed to buy one unit at a time and then to sell it at a later date. Okay. So we use some um, cheating here to make it a more simple question. So we wanna, we, we, we are given all the information. We know about the future prices. So all we need to do is to choose to, to buy at a low point and to sell at a high point, right? And the only limit is that we need to first buy and then sell. So the sell date must be in the future, must be after the buying date. Okay. Uh, assume that we have the data like this. And the first row is the days, day from day zero to day 16. And the second row is the price of that day. Okay. So if we plot it, it looks like, like this curve. Okay. There's low points, right? Low points here, high points here points here, low points here, okay? So all we need to do is to, to choose a day to buy in and then choose another day after the buying day to sell it, yeah. So the problem is also clear. So how do we get the maximum profits out of our strategy? Okay. So we can think about this straightforward strategy. Um, what about buying at the lowest and selling at the highest possible date? Okay. So they're basically given the data like this, we can, there are two ways to do according to this strategy. We can find the lowest and the highest point prices. Okay. So to the highest prices, because the highest price is the day that we want to sell it. So we will need to work left from the highest price to find the lowest prior price, right? Because the buying must happen before the sell, okay? Or the second way is that we fix the buying date. Right. And then we work right from the lowest price to find the highest later price that we want to sell. Okay. And then we compare these two strategies. We compare these two ways and find the greater, find the, the, the better one. Right. That is a, a pretty uh, intuitive way. So for example, in the data set here, um, we can first spot the lowest points and the highest points, for example. So in this point, in this example, we first uh, find the lowest points, which is the bottom here. So this is all the way point. And we work right from the lowest price and find the highest later price, which is here. Okay, so this is, uh, indicated by the second strategy here, right? And other than this one, we can also um, find the highest point here, which is the points over here. And then we work left from the highest price and there's only one day left, right? So, this is the, according to the first strategy. Well, so apparently in this case, the two red circles, their difference is much greater than the difference between the green circles, okay? So we can obviously choose to buy at day seven and then sell at day 11, okay? And it looks really nice and seems that this is a good way to find the, optimal strategy, optimal solution. But actually this does not always work. So imagine our price curve looks like this. Okay. 
and where is our highest and lowest points. They're indicated by the da dashed line, okay? But if we find the highest points and work from the left of it, there's only day one exists, right? So we only can choose this one. And if we choose the lowest, we choose to buy in at lowest points, but there's no future day to sell. So this is uh, basically doesn't work, right? So, however, our um, intuition tells us if we have a glance of the curve, we can apparently notice that, okay, this middle segment, it seems a pretty nice difference, right? It seems pretty, pretty uh, good opportunity to buy in at this point and sell out at this point. But how the, but the, neither one of these two points in the red circles are the global highest or lowest points, okay? So this is a not good way if we focus on the global lowest or highest prices. That says we need to have a better strategy. Okay, so um, there's always brute force solutions to basically all kinds of problems. So in this case, why not we just go through all possible buying and sell out uh, dates pairs? Okay, so in this brute force solution of maximum sub average problem, we basically want to examine all possible uh, pairs of buy and sell dates. So uh, we have an uh, implementation in a pseudocode like this. And this, the, the function brute force find max takes an input, the input array that contains the prices for all the days. And the low and the high is the starting position and the ending position of the price tables. Okay, so low is the leftmost and high is the rightmost. So, and we can use um, two for loops, uh, nested for loops to um, iterate over all possible um, buy and sell dates. And we use the variable max profit to store the maximum, prof uh, the maximum solution, the optimal solution and we use the max left and max right to indicate the optimal buying and the sell out dates. So the outer for loop, the loop counter i indicates the buying dates. And in the inner for loop, the j indicates the sell for loop, indicates the sell date. So j is always next, to, is always greater than i. Okay, so it iterates over from j plus one to high. Okay, and the profit is the difference between the two cells. Okay, if the profit is greater than the maximum profit, then we will record the maximum left, the maximum right, and the maximum profits. And finally, we'll return the solution. So this is a quite uh, straightforward solution, right? But, um, if we analyze the efficiency of this algorithm, it's basically two for loops, right? And we know that um, whenever we have a nested for loops, the running time is, will look, um, uh, eventually looks nasty because this problem basically um, means that the inner for loop is uh, executed for these many times. Right, it's a summation of uh, arithmetic series, so it's a quadratic function, okay? Or we can think of it that it's a problem of the combination, right? We are taking from n elements, two elements out of n, and the basic number of combinations it is at the level of the quadratic function of n squared, right? Big theta of n squared. So it is a quadratic function, and quadratic function is suboptimal. You'll remember the insertion sorts when we compare it to merge sorts, 
it eventually grows very fast compared to n times log n function. Okay? So the problem is, can we do better? Okay? And uh, um, the short answer is yes. And that's why we need to use divide and conquer algorithms to solve this problem. Okay, but before that, we need to um, um, like make little uh, transformation of the problem to make it an easier form to do, apply divide and conquer problems. Okay, so we basically rephrase the problem. We want to find a sequence of a day over which the net change is maximized, right? From the first day to the last day is maximized. And we consider not the absolute price, but the daily change in price, okay? And that change is the computed by the current price minus the previous day price, right? So if we, make, if we add a column here, or add a row, at a third row to the original data price table, we have the change, okay? So for the first day zero, there's no previous day to compare, so it's empty. But for the day one, the change is the 113 here minus 100, which gives us 13. And so on for all the elements in the third row. Okay, so this is our new inputs, A. And the problem um, becomes that we find we want to find the non-empty and the contiguous subarea of A whose values have the largest summation. Okay, so if we can find the a segment in the A, right, and if in that segment the uh, net change has a maximum summation. That means we basically are maximizing the uh, the profits. Okay, so we'll call this contiguous subarea the maximum subarea. Okay, so that's where the maximum subarea problem uh, came from. And for example, in this particular case the elements from A8 to A11, right? Which give us the maximum uh, summation of 30 of 43 here. Alrighty. And let's look at how this transformation help. Okay. So maybe at the first glance, it doesn't help, right? Because we there's still, we still need to check that many sub areas if we use the brute force uh, way of thinking, right? But uh, we'll later see that, next video we'll see that how divide and conquer algorithms can be applied to this uh, new inputs uh, area, which basically counts the, uh, the net change of each day.